Hello everyone, thanks for joining me on this webinar today. Um, Hatcher University presents disciplines. I will be discussing only four disciplines today. Combined driving, vaulting, jumper, and standard bread racing. All right, so the first topic I'm going to start with is combined driving. The first comprehensive and standard rules were laid down in the early 1970s. It is one of eight equine sports governed at the international level by the FEI and at the national federation level by USEF. The American Driving Society provides graduated levels of experience. You can be in the training level, preliminary, intermediate, and advanced levels for both drivers and equines. The rules and combined driving are aimed at safety, welfare, and fairness for all concerned. The purpose of all competition is to match the talents of horse and driver combinations against each other under fair and equal conditions. Rules and scoring are based on a system of penalties. The lower score, the better. Drivers and equines of any breed or size can form groups together to make partners. Equines and singles, pairs, tandems, and uni unicorns and four in hands may compete. Just as essential to these partnerships are the grooms or navigators, those second or third persons on the carriage who, though they never touch the reins or whip, provide brains and support as well as balance. In the combined driving, there are three competitions of the sport. It is a beauty and control. Horses or ponies and their drivers individually in specified patterns and gates to demonstrate the skills, obedience, and development appropriate to their levels of training before the watchful eyes of one or more judges. Just dressage develops and displays polish, discipline, and athleticism of equine and driver dancing together. All right, next slide. So the next, um, the second competition in combined driving is called marathon or cross country. The driver tests his metal and that of his horses or ponies in control of paces and speeds, agility, obedience, and endurance over distances of eight to 18 kilometers. Every kilometer or so, the group has to maneuver obstacles in which they choose their path to go through gates in the correct direction and sequence. At the training level, marathon obstacles are geared toward being a learning experience. And as level competence increases, so do speeds and numbers of obstacles and gates. In this competition, the partnership of the navigator becomes critically important. This competition requires thinking. So here on my picture, I have um, a group going through doing a marathon and they're going through their obstacles and you can see the two people on the back that are just holding on are called the navigators and then there's one person on the very front that is the um, lead who's the one controlling all the horses all right next slide all right and then the last event of combined driving is the timed um, obstacles are cone driving. So drivers and their horses drive between precisely spaced pairs of cones over a prescribed course of up to 20 obstacles driven in correct sequence and direction and within an allowed time based on the size of equine and level of advancement. Drivers and horses develop and move up in levels, speeds increase and in clearance between cones decrease making for challenges and fun that never stop. Cones may be seen as that meld of elegance and thrills that con consumes the competition set to demonstrate the fitness, mind, and training of the horse following the more physical challenges of the marathon. So right, you can see this lady doesn't have a navigator with her. She's just with one horse. So notice how she's going through cones. And like I said, the more experience you get and the harder the level, the smaller the gap is between the cones. They're always gonna make it so the carriage and the horse can get through, but they're gonna make it smaller so you don't have as much room to clear through. All right, 
So if we go to the next slide, I will show you some video clips of different of the different events. So the first one we're looking at is dressage. So they just have one horse and they have a navigator on the back and they are doing a certain pattern and they're looking at the beauty and control of the horse, how well it listens. All right. And the next video we have is for the marathon. So they have a big group of people. So they have a four in hand. See how they have two horses in the back and two horses in the front. And they're going through their obstacles that you do in the marathon. Notice how they have one guy who's the driver and then they have the two navigators on the back. When they make those really sharp turns through all these obstacles, they have to make sure that the navigators on the back go from side to side to make sure that the cart the cart doesn't fall over so they kind of go to the other side to make sure weight is on the other side to keep it down on the ground right like that okay so the next um video is timed obstacles and notice how they're going through cones and they also have a navigator on the back but they just have one horse that they're using That's how they pick up speed pretty quick also. And they just go through the cones. All right. So the next, um, Oh, so Waldo, sorry. So who is at who at Hetra used to be in combined driving is Waldo. So Waldo is um, one of the horses at Hetra that used to be in that used to be in combined driving before he came to Hetra. So the next um, discipline that we are talking about is jumper. Next slide. So jumper classes are scored objectively based solely on the horse's athletic ability and over athletic ability over fences as measured by time. So the jumper's only job is to clear all the fences in the courses in the course as quickly as possible without incurring any faults. So fault and scoring, a, a horse incurs fault for each mistake made, four faults for each rail knocked down, four faults for every refusal, one fault for every second over the maximum time allowed to negotiate the course. The horse with the least number of faults and fastest time wins. Jumper courses, which are technical in nature and, and typically consist of 12 to 16 jumps required strategic riding and in addition to a switch pace. So now we'll go and I'll show you a video of this. Notice how they're jumping over and they can get up there pretty high depending on the level of um, jumper they are. All right. And then, so who used to be jumpers at Hetra? So Allie, Galaxy, and Windsor used to all be jumpers before their time at Hetra. So next is um, harness racing. So, type of racing where horses go around a track while pulling a sulky. A 
Sulky is a light two-wheel vehicle equipped with bicycle wheels and a driver behind them. Um, the breed standard breads are used. Standard breads are so named because in the early years of the standard bread stud book, only horses who could trot or pace a mile in a standard time or whose um, standard time of no more than two minutes and 30 seconds were admitted to the book. So in order to get your, so back when in order to get their standard bread papers, um, they had to do that amount, that distance in two minutes and 30 seconds. That's pretty fast. Um, so then next slide. So there's, um, so there's pacers and trotters. So pacers who I have on the left, um, move the legs on each side of their body in together. So notice how the front left and the hind left are both going forward as the right front and the right hind are going back. And then we also have trotters. And so the trotters on the right, they move their legs and diagonal and that they move their diagonal legs together. So notice how the left front and the right hind are going forward and the right front and the left hind are going back. So they're moving together. And then here is a clip of harness driving. See how they have the little Folkies on the back, and that's how they're riding along with their horse. Pretty interesting. All right. So Smokey is our horse at Hatcher that used to compete in harness driving, actually. So our next um, discipline, our last discipline that I have for us today is called vaulting. So back some background on vaulting. Um, vaulting was brought to the United States more than 35 years ago from Europe. Vaulting is a unique and growing sport which combines dance and gymnastics on a moving horse. It is a year round sport. So it can be indoors or outdoor. It can be in indoor outdoor arenas, depending on weather. And you don't have to know how to ride in order to vault, but vaulting can greatly improve your riding skills. So vaulting helps to develop coordination, balance, strength, and creativity, all working in harmony with the horse. Um, you can also develop responsibility, taking care of the horse, trust, you have to trust the lunger, the horse, and all your teammates. And you can also, um, have some self-confidence. I mean, you're up on top of a horse while it's moving and you're doing different positions. You gotta have a lot of self-confidence to do that. Um, so vaulting programs are not only competitive teams, but also include recreational groups, pony clubs, and 4-H clubs. They're always done in a very controlled environment. So it's a very enclosed, a fully enclosed arena in a consistent large circle with soft footing and the horse is attached to a lunge line and controlled by a trainer or the lunger. Um, horse, lunger, and vaulter all work as a team. The lunger controlling the horse, the horse performing at a continuous gait, either the walk, trot, or the canter, depending on the vaulter level. And then the vaulter performs a series of gymnastics and dance on the horse as it moves in its, moves in its circle. So you can see my picture. I have just a, an example of a group. So we have our horse and then the lady in the black would be the lunger and she's got a whip with her and then um, all the rest of the team, all of the team of the vaulters next to them. So many different breeds and sizes of horses can be used for vaulting. Um, best horses are calm, strong, fit, and kind with a consistent gait. Vaulters may participate individually in pairs or as part of a team. And then the team competition, up to three members of the team are on the horse at once doing a variety of moves. Vaulters can be any age. So is vaulting safe? Yes, it is. Many factors contribute to the safety of this sport, including the horse is, in a con is controlled at all times by an experienced trained lunger. 
The vaulters are taught to condition their bodies with stretching and strengthening exercises, and they are taught safe mounts and dismounts at all levels. Most exercises are learned on a stationary apparatus called a vaulting barrel before they are performed on the horse. So in this picture, I have, you can see I have um, an example of her practicing on the vaulting barrel on the ground before she goes up onto the horse and practices these positions. So now we will look at a video of vaulting. I think vaulting is very interesting. I'm going to actually just walk and jump on up there and then she starts her routine. All right. So what horse used to compete in vaulting before their time at Hatra? Lady. Lady was a competed in vaulting for a short period before she came to Hetra. All right, so that is all of the disciplines I am touching on today. Um, thank you guys for watching this webinar with me about over a couple horse disciplines that the horse that Hetra used to compete in before their time. Um, thanks for joining me today. We'll see you guys.